happy Saturday. So last week I got rid of some plants. I had some plants that I decided that were not coming into 2024 with me. And so I got rid of them and that left me feeling super empowered. Um, I love walking into my space now. I don't have to worry about dead plants or about feeling guilty about not wanting to have that plant there. Um, that kind of freed me up a little bit. Kind of makes me feel like I could get more plants. I'm not promising that I'm going to buy these plants, but these are plants that I will be looking out for. If I see them or an opportunity to buy them, there's a real possibility that I might pick them up. So there's about 15 or so plants on this list and I want to go through them now. So what I want to do is I want to go to my computer and we're going to walk through and we're going to do some research online and that way I can show you what these plants look like. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first plant that is on my list, of course, you know, I have certain plants that I really like. Um, but I I think I'm going to surprise you with some of these on this list. Okay, so my first, of course, is a Hoya. You know I love Hoyas. And so the first one is the Hoya Sarawak. Now, I love this plant. What I love about the Sarawak is that the leaves are so big. Like, you know, I love a small leaf Hoya, but it's something about the extra big Hoya leaves that excite me too. And I, I have a version of a Sarawak. It's not, it's nowhere near a version of a Sarawak, but I have a big leaf Hoya. Let me go get it really quickly. So this is the closest thing that I have to the Sarawak. Um, this is the Pachyclata, and I love this plant. It flowered for me for the first time this year, so I'm super excited about getting more blooms. I probably need to repot it because um, she she runs out of water really quickly. I have to water her way more often than I thought I should. But yeah, I would love to add a Sarawak to my collection because I think she would be a great addition to her, right? <laughs> okay. So my next plant is the Hoya Hushkaliana Albo Marginata. So you know I have, well maybe you don't, I have the Hushkaliana yellow and I have the Hushkaliana variegated, which I love these. But this Hushkaliana Albo Mar Marginata, so this is where the variegation is on the outside. Oh, I love this. She is so cute. So she's, of course, a small leaf Hoya. And I'm hoping that she has a similar, you know, habit growth as the ones that I have. They are super easy to care for. Now, I haven't had any problems with them. So I'm thinking she might be fun to have. I think she's super cute. I love, I love the look of her. The next one is this Hoya. Hoya Carnosa Sparkles Splash. Now, naming for plants can get a little tricky because the person who finds them or, you know, comes up with them gets to name them. and But then these companies get them and they name them what they want to name them. But this thing is beautiful. Now, I don't know how rare this plant is, or but I just think she is really pretty really pretty and carnosas are really easy to care for those splash that speckles on that oh i love it i love it mm. okay the next um plant is philodendron i know i have a, <laughs> we have a love hate toxic relationship <laughs> But look at this. Come on. Okay. So I already have the Jungle Boogie, which is the green version. Let me show you. So yeah, I already have the green version of this. And I want to thank Rachel of Lots of Pots because she suggested that I take her in the bathroom when I take a shower. And so that the steam can, you know, give her some more oomph and boy, did it work. So these plant, these leaves had not unfurled 
and this one actually unfurled the other day and this one is opening up so she is i mean these leaves have been sitting unfurled for months so within the last week both of these have opened up and i think this one is actually trying to open as well so so yes this is the, i have the green version and i want that neon version and the other version, which is the Ring of Fire. Now, the Ring of Fire is a variegated version. That version comes with, it, the leaves come in, and you know they give that bronzy, orangey look. And I think they kind of uh, mature to be like this chartreuse green, and then they settle on a dark green. This is what I believe I've read. So I am in love with that. All three of those versions, the regular green, like I have the neon and this ring of fire version. I, I believe there's one other version. I just love them all. I love the growth habit. I love the um, how st um, sturdy they are. I just bit my tongue. I love how sturdy they are. I just think they are so pretty. Um... I think what I'm learning about philodendron is that they need to be watered more than I gave them credit for. I have another philodendron and I noticed that the moments that the moment that I started watering her more often, the leaves started growing and growing bigger. So I really think what it is is that I am not watering them enough. I think that was the same thing with my vining philodendron and I do want another shot at a neon um, heart leaf philodendron, but I don't have it on the list because I kind of feel like I probably need to be on punishment. <laughs> but I just think this thing is gorgeous. That neon sort of jungle boogie ring of fire. I think it's called a, uh, let me see. I wrote it down. Serratum, serratum philodendron. Oh, I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. That chartreuse green and that sort of, that jagged edge. Oh, I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So yeah, I want some of that. I want some of that. Look at that. Look at that coloring in it. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Now, I am I tend to steer away from plants that are variegated that seem to like be vulnerable or whimsy or like just don't act right because they're variegated so i'm going to do a little bit more research and see how people are dealing with their ring of fire if i'm noticing that the variegation starts turning brown or starts doing crazy things then i probably will nix that one off the list but for now she is still on there okay my next one is the aglionema etta rose <sighs> Now, I love the aglionemas. I don't really do well with them. So I have to buy a mature plant. So this is why I don't have a lot of them in my collection. But this at a rose, oh, she is so pretty. I, I'm not even a real huge fan of the pink with the green. I, I really like the green and white versions, but this version, I think it's just the, the, the blush pink that's doing it for me. I really like this plant. I really like, I've been eyeing it for some time and I think um, I would do okay with it. I'm not really sure. I'm still waiting for my aglionema to kind of, I've had my aglionema for now for two years and she's, she's doing pretty good. I want to propagate her at least one time though, before I actually commit to getting another one. Cause like I said, I need to get a, a mature version and the mature ones are a little expensive. They're a little bit more expensive than if you got a four inch pot. So I want to, I want to do a little bit more work with the Aglionema before I commit to getting another one. But real talk, I could probably have a house full of Aglionemas. I think they are beautiful. And, and I want to say, I feel like they are travel friendly too. Like if I wanted to travel and if I wanted to be able to leave home for at least two weeks at a time, I think this could do it. I literally water my Aglionema maybe once a month. So I really think the day would do well. All right. You know there's pothos on this list, right? I had to have a pothos. Now, 
I have been eyeing this lemon meringue for forever. I could not find it. What I end up finding though was the Global Green and I brought her in here so that she can get watered. So she's a little soft right now. So I did find the Global Green and as you see that Enjoy, or no, the Lemon Moraine is literally just the yellow or gold and green version. And this is the green on green version. So I really want that version of this Pothos. Now, um, there is a, and I wanted to point out to this um, YouTuber, I think her name is, um, oh, what is her name? Oh, Planty, Plant Heartbeats. Her channel, oh my goodness, you gotta check her channel out. Um, I love her channel, by the way. She loves plants, she has a lot of plants. But um, yeah, so I want I want that lemon meringue version. So on my wish list is the lemon meringue and the enjoy and this is the enjoy or pearls and jade i i really get them mixed up but there is a distinction between the two um what i think the distinction is is that the lemon meringue has yellow and green variegation the global green is green on green and i want to say the enjoy is white on green and it's blocks of color versus speckles right i want to say the pearls and jade has speckles with splashes of green are confused like sometimes you'll see pictures and it'll say enjoy but it'll be a pearls and jade and so i think there's a little confusion about which one is which um i just want the variety i don't care what the name of it is i want the variegate mm, the, the splash on green as well as i want the white on green so it doesn't matter what the name of them is i want all of them i do i did hear that they're kind of finicky so when i found the global i was like if i can take care of the global then i'll venture out and and get the the pearls and jay or the enjoy so yes that's the plan uh, the other one is the Jessina. Now, as far as I know, I'm not sure if the Jessina, there's another one that I want, but I think it's exclusive to a specific nursery. This one is, think of the marble with green on green, right? So it kind of gives you marble vibes, but there's no white. And I love that. I love my marble. Um, and so yes, this Jessina, now she's a little expensive and my marble was giving me a little bit of trouble. Like you, a marble is not a glow, uh, is not a golden. They're all easy enough, but the marble, if you don't do her right, because she has so much white, she'll, she'll Kirk out on you. Uh, this is the variegated neon and I think she is beautiful. The only place I've seen this is Gabriella Plants. Um, I It might have some, I think I read that it might convert a little bit if you, if it doesn't have enough light, but um, I wouldn't care. I would not care. I just want, I want the combination. I love that. I think this is beautiful. Oh my goodness. I'm enjoying my neon so much that having a neon with variegation, uh, how can you not, how can you not love that? Oh, it's so bright and cheerful. I love that. Okay. So the next one is, um, my variegated jade. Now you heard me say my. I've had this plant before and I killed it. <laughs> uh, the watering. It's the watering. You have to get the watering right. So what I did was I set myself up for success and I purchased a regular jade. And I propagated this jade. I grew this jade. It was probably about that tall and two stems, or was it one? I think it was one stem. And so what I did was I propagated it. I cut one of the stems off and I grew this stem here. And I'm probably gonna cut it again and grow some more. So my thought was, is if I can get this to grow, 
then I can get used to caring for a jade and noticing when the jade needed to be watered, if it needed more light. And it, as you see, it's growing. It's growing really well. So the variegated jade is just slightly a little bit more needy than this one. And so I really want that variegated one. I think it is so pretty. Okay, the next one is... I think it's called a um, prickly pear cactus or spineless prickly pear cactus. And what I'm thinking is that these don't have the little needles. I don't, this is part of the reason why I stay away from cactus. I don't like those. I had a bad experience as a kid and I don't want any parts of them, but I love the way they look. I absolutely love the way this looks and I would love to have one if you put it in a sunny enough location it could literally be a really big statement piece it can grow really big so I love it I think and, and it you know the propagation on it I think you can propagate them really easy so I really love cactus I just I'm scared I don't like the the spiny things uh, hence the next one. So this is the Euphorbia White Ghost. Now I have a Euphorbia, which is this one here. And I love her, but the reason I got her was because I really wanted the White Ghost. And the White Ghost was a little bit harder to find and more expensive. So I said, let me try with the green version. She's hanging in there. She's doing some things. I think I need to get better at noticing when they need to be watered. Cause this isn't really a cactus. This is a succulent. So it needs to be watered a little bit more often than I give it credit for. And so I probably just need to be a little bit more diligent about watering it. But I think I will be fine with the white ghost version, but I do want one. And I want one that I'm going to keep forever, like for a long, long time. I want to be able to say like, I've had this plant for 10 years. <laughs> so I'm so this list would not be complete unless we had a syndapsis on this list. Come on now. Uh, for me, it's the dark form. Now I originally didn't want the dark form because they grew even slower than the moonlight trubia now so this is the trubia dark form um but my moonlight grows really quickly and that's what that's what's behind me here she has really taken off she loves light and so she took off really well so that makes me think I would love this. My mind thinks like this. I want to mix them together. I want to have them together in a pot. I think it's so pretty. I love the dark leaves. Love, love, love the dark leaves. Like I am, I hate when people say they're obsessed. I'm not obsessed, <laughs> but I do love the dark leaves. The other syndapsis that I am, that is on my wish list is the silver lady. Now she happens to be one of the more expensive ones, which is one of the reasons why I haven't gotten her yet. Um, but this year I saw on someone's channel, I think it was Rachel, the silver princess. What? She is on the list. So the first one is actually the silver lady. So this is the silver lady, or at least they say this is the silver lady. A lot of these, the exotica, the silver lady, even the silver splash have very similar traits, but this silver lady, the one that I originally fell in love with had a really dark green, like almost black. And I was like, oh, I gotta have that. Um, but this silver princess, this silver princess gives me the, the sheen of the moonlight, the trubia, but the coloring of the exotica. So I'm loving it. I think she is really pretty. I'm assuming that they don't grow as fast as the other um, syndapsis, but I would be okay with a slow grower. Um, I, I really would. I would be okay. I just think she is so pretty. So one of the things that I wanted to do this year, especially with this video. So this video is right around MLK Day. 
So happy, first off, happy birthday to Martin Luther King. But I also wanted to take this time to celebrate my brothers and sisters here on YouTube. So I consume a lot of YouTube and I wanted to share with you some of the, the people on YouTube that I consume on a regular basis. Um, my interests are all over the place. So they're not just plant people, even though I will be sharing some plant people with, with you as well. The first person I wanted to highlight was Alicia Renice, the artist. Oh my goodness. She is a creative, she creates music, she talks about topics that are healing to your soul. Like, please, if you have time, go and check her channel out. I absolutely love her channel. Um, she has playlists. She has podcasts. Like I said, she has music. Um, matter of fact, I have purchased her book. Um, this is a read that you can do every year when it's time to create your vision board, when it's time to go through your year and and remember, you know, how much you've grown and how much you've changed. When I tell you, it, it's actually called Black Girl Creative, a love letter to black women, creators, dreamers, and makers. Let me tell you, this is a good read. Uh, you can get it off of Amazon. If you go on her page, I'm pretty sure she has a link. If not, I will link to it in the description. Another thing this year, this year has been the year of me sort of like taking account for, you know, me, right? And so one of the things that I adopted probably a year or two ago was journaling. And I have ran across a YouTuber that I am in love with. Her name is Kathy Hampton. And she has a channel where she literally does journal sessions online. So you can, she, it's early in the morning. It's, it's not real early in the morning, <laughs> but it's early in the morning. And for an hour, she will give you prompts. She will talk you through the journaling. There's quiet time where you can journal for like 20 minutes. And she has the most calm, serene voice. She is literally like, the human form of Zen. It is so relaxing. I absolutely love it. I watch it. She has, um, she comes on and does a live every Tuesday and Thursdays. I want to say it's at eight in the morning. And so I end up catching the replays because I, I have something else that I'm doing at that time in the morning, but beautiful sessions. Okay. One more this year I have done you know, I've tried a lot of new things on my sabbatical and we can talk about my sabbatical at another time. Definitely, we should talk about it. But during my sabbatical, I have taken some time to kind of get to learn myself and try new things. And one of the things that I wanted to tackle during my sabbatical was learning how to invest. And so... so Sandra has the perfect channel for anybody who is interested in learning how to invest, like getting past the hurdle of investing, thinking that you are starting to lay all the things, right? There's a couple of other channels that talk about investing too, and I will introduce those as well. But Sandra's channel, if you are skittish about investing and you want someone that's going to walk you hand by hand through the process. She is a teacher by trade. She is a retired teacher. And so teaching you how to, to invest is like her calling. Like she literally is built for this. Yes, of course, I would not leave you today without mentioning a plant channel. So Today's plant channel highlight is Rachel's channel, Lots of Pots. I absolutely love Rachel's channel. Not only is she gorgeous, her plants are gorgeous. She literally has a wall of plants, like a curtain of plants. So if you are into planty channels or planty videos or planty content, or you just want to see a beautiful smile and a beautiful uh, 
personality come through on camera, go and check her channel out. So hopefully you guys have not only enjoyed my wish list today, but you've also been introduced to some new people that I have been consuming here on YouTube. So uh, that's all I got for you today. Uh, this was fun because I love adding plants to my wish list. Now, this is what I'm going to charge you with. If you think there's a plant that I would enjoy, please make sure you put that in the comment below. Like if it's related to the ones that I've talked about. Um, if you are already watching these people already, make sure you let me know in the comment section or let them know in their comment section, hey, your girl Yvette is over there promoting your channel. And if there are some people that you think that I would be interested in that are on YouTube, make sure you put their links in my, or put their channel description names in the comment below because I would love to expand my list as well. And if no one else has said it to you today, have a great and plenty day. Bye.